In this lesson, we'll take a look at vectors in three-dimensional space, called three-space. And the first example, we're asked to plot uh, three different points here. Uh, first of all, the point 430. Now, the uh, first number is the x coordinate, the second is the y coordinate, and the third is the z coordinate. And so that can locate at a point in, uh, in any three-dimensional space. This is the origin. The uh, x-axis looks like it comes out of the screen or out of the page towards you. The y-axis goes towards the right and the z-axis up. Now, so the 4 means that you go 4 in the direction of the positive x-axis. And then the 3 means from there you go 3 in the direction of the positive y-axis. The 0 means you don't go up towards the, in the direction of the z or down at all. So if we draw another uh, line over here, this, that point actually lies in what's called the x-y plane because the z coordinate is 0. So that would be the point 4, 3, 0 right there. Now the point negative 2, 0, 3, the negative 2 is the x-coordinate, so we would go 2 in the direction of the negative x-axis. This is the positive x-axis, this would be the negative x-axis, so negative 2 in that direction. And the 0 y-coordinate means you don't go from that point in the y-direction at all, you just go up 3 units. And so uh, if we draw this over here, that's just showing that it's three units in the um, direction of the positive z-axis. And so that would be the point negative 2, 0, 3. That point, since the y-coordinate is 0, lies on the uh, x-z-axis, because x and z are non-zero numbers, but y is, has a value of 0 there. Now the ne point negative 5, 6, 0, we will go negative 5 in the direction of the uh, negative y-axis, uh, 6 in the direction of the uh, positive z, uh, sorry, y-axis, and then 2 up, because the z-coordinate's 2. So negative 5, 6, and 2. Now to make this point look three-dimensional, I'm going to draw a rectangular prism or a box with those sides. And this is what the box would look like. So first of all, I had drawn this. So you duplicate, um, well, I would, from that point, I would duplicate this. This side here, of course, is the same up to as here. And um, just draw the entire box. So th that would be the point negative 5, 6, 2. And that makes it look th more three-dimensional. Now, on the second page here, uh, vectors in three-dimensional space, these vectors are each one unit long in the direction of the positive x, that's i, 1, 0, 0. In the positive uh, y-axis, the, the vector is called j, 0, 1, 0. And the vector that's one unit long in the direction of the positive z-axis would be 0, 0, 1. It's called k. And they're called the standard basis vectors in three space. And the reason they're called the standard basis vectors in three space is because any other vector any three-dimensional vector can be written in terms of those vectors quite easily. So for example, if we consider the vector 3, 5, 2. Another way to write that vector, and, and this makes it look more three-dimensional, uh, 3, 5, 2 means you go 3 in this direction, and then 5 in 5 j's in this direction, and then 2 k's in this direction. And so that would be the vector 3, 5, 2. I don't have the second k here, but that is the uh, idea. So that's the point 3, 5, 2 at the end there. Oh, there's my other vector. So another way to write that vector v instead of the vector 3, 5, 2 is it's 3i's plus 5j's and then plus 2k's. And that's how you can get from the tail to the head of the vector uh, just by going along uh, the i, j, and k vectors. So this is called standard basis form. Now, if you have any vector in three-dimensional space, uh, back to component form here, uh, 3, 5, 2 is component form, uh, so we'll call it uh, the vector ABC. The uh, magnitude of that vector, and this is very similar to two space, is just the root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. In fact, it's still Pythagoras theorem. It's, tall, it's called Pythagoras theorem in three dimensions. In two space, uh, it would only have the components a and b, for example, so it would be the root of a squared plus b squared. In the third dimension, we have a third uh, chord, uh, component to the vectors. That's why there's a c squared here. 
In uh, this example, we're asked to determine the magnitude at sketch the vector negative 1, negative 4, 7. So the magnitude of the vector would be the root of negative 1 squared plus negative 4 squared plus 7 squared. Negative 1 squared is 1, negative 4 squared would be 16, and 7 squared is 49. Adding these together, that's uh, 50 plus uh, 16 would be 66. So the root of 66 is how long this vector is, its magnitude. Now to sketch it, negative 1 is the uh, x component, so we would go negative 1, direction of the negative x-axis, and then negative 4 is the y component, so we would go negative 4 in this direction, the negative y-axis, and then 7 up, because the z component is 7. And so that's what the vector looks like. To make it look a little more three-dimensional, I'll draw a box around that. Again, negative 1, negative 4, 7 to get from the tail to the head of the vector. And that's what our vector C would look like. Now some operations on vectors in uh, three-dimensional space. If uh, u is the vector x1, y1, z1, and uh, v is the vector x2, y2, z2, then in order to add the vectors, we add the like components, just like in two-dimensional space. We add the two x components, we add the two y components to get the y component of our sum vector, and we add the two z components to get the uh, z component of our sum vector. Same idea with subtraction, except we're subtracting x1 minus x2, y1 minus y2, and z1 minus z2. Uh, scalar multiplication as well. k times k is a scalar, a real number, so k times vector u would be, and we would just multiply the k by each of these components, so kx1, comma, ky1, comma, kz1. Now to find the uh, vector between two points, if uh, a is the point A1, B1, C1, and uh, B is the point A2, B2, C2. Then the vector that goes from A to B, and to get these components, you, if this is the head of the vector, then you take these coordinates and subtract those ones from it. So you go A2 minus A1, B2 minus B1 for the Y component, and C2 minus C1 for the Z component. And it's always the head coordinates minus the tail coordinates. If you do it in the opposite order, then it's the opposite vector. So if the uh, if it was a1 first, a2 second, b1 first, b2 second, c1 first, c2 second, then that would actually be the vector ba, not ab. Okay, in this example, we're given a couple vectors, and we're going to do a little bit of addition and some uh, scalar multiplication here. So uh, vector a plus b, we're just adding these two uh, vectors together, and so we just add the um, like coordinate components. So negative 2 and 5 add to 3, 4 and negative 3 add to 1, and 0 and 6 add to 6. So that's the vector a plus b. For 4a minus 3b, we're multiplying vector a by 4 and vector b by 3, and then we're subtracting them. So do the scalar multiplication first. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. 4 times 4 is 16, and 4 times the z coordinate component of 0 is 0. 3 times 5 is 15, 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, and 3 times 6 is 18. Notice I only expanded the 3 in. I didn't expand the negative 3 in. You could do that if you multiplied the negative 3 in. This would be negative 15, positive 9, and negative 18. They'd all be the opposite sign. But if you do that, then this would be an addition, uh, not a subtraction and you would still end up with the same answer. So negative 8 take away 15 is negative 23. 16 now minus negative 9 same as 16 plus 9 so that's 25 and 0 take away 18 would be negative 18. So that's 4a minus 3b. The collinearity test for uh, two vectors. Two vectors are collinear or parallel if one vector is a scalar multiple of the other. So if we have these two vectors, p is negative 3, 1, 6, and q is the vector negative 12, 4, 24, we're asked are p and q collinear. To determine that, you have to see is there some number that scalar multiple you would take of one of the vectors to equal the other vector. And so notice that if I multiply p's components by 4, I get q exactly. So multiply this by 4, you get negative 12. Multiply 1 by the same number, you get 4. Multiply 6 by 4, you get 24. So 4 times p is equal to q. That means that p and q are collinear or parallel. And they would look like this. If this is vector p, then this is vector q. If we multiply this by 4, we would get the same vector.
So that's another way to show or demonstrate what it looks like at least that they are parallel vectors. In example five, we're asked what value for C, so notice that C is the uh, Y component of this vector, makes this vector collinear with this vector. And so what you have to do is look at uh, two coordinate or components that you know both the numbers. So for example, the negative one and six or the uh, five and negative 30, doesn't matter which pair. Now the K value that you multiply one by to give the other is just the ratio of these two. So for example, uh, I'm trying to figure out what number do I multiply this by to give me this. So what number do I multiply negative one by to give me six? And so to get that K number, you would divide those two components. I'm dividing six by negative one, which of course is negative six. I could have also divided negative 30 by five and got negative six, and that would be the same number. So that's the multiplier. So to get C, this number here, I would multiply the Y component of four over here by that constant negative six. And so C would be negative 24. So if we put a negative 24 in there, then six, negative 24, negative 30 is collinear or parallel with negative one, four, five. In example six, we're asked to determine a vector that is orthogonal which is another name for perpendicular. The word normal is also used here. Orthogonal, normal, perpendicular, they all mean the same thing. Perpendicular to 3, 5, negative 1. Now, so let's let the other vector, we'll call it Q, and then its, uh, its components we'll call X, Y, Z. So that's the orthogonal or perpendicular vector. Now, if two vectors are orthogonal or perpendicular or normal, then the dot product of them is zero. So if we take the dot product of these two vectors, we would go three times x plus five times y plus negative one times z, which is negative z, and that would give us zero because the dot product of them should be zero if they're perpendicular. So <clears throat> what you should do now is choose any two numbers for x and y or x and z or y and z, it really doesn't matter which pair, and then solve for what the other uh, component is. And sometimes you'll find you'll, if you're just doing this randomly, you'll, you'll work, um, you'll get, find some examples might be more uh, easier than others. But uh, I've chosen x to be 4 and y to be negative 2 for no particular reason other than I, I did the math ahead of time and found that z wasn't going to be work out to be some wild fraction, but that would still be okay. So if I uh, put 4 in place of x here and negative 2 in place of y here, so, and I'm just going to solve for z now. So that's 12 minus 10 minus z equals 0. So 12 minus 10 is, of course, 2. So we have 2 minus z equals 0, so z would have to be 2. Of course, if you took a, a different number for x or y and solve for z, or uh, y and z and then solve for x, you'll get a different vector. There's an infinite number of answers here, of correct answers here. So since z is 2, uh, the uh, vector 4, negative 2, 2 is uh, perpendicular to 3, 5, negative 1. 